We have a lot of examples uh, throughout the Bible, uh, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, um, of people's faith being tested, being challenged, um, and many examples where, uh, sadly, um, many people did not stand up to the test uh, when their faith was tested or challenged, when they were um, you know, in many different ways, the faith was tested. Um, but many examples throughout the Bible, they, they were unwilling to continue on, uh, in faith. But then we have many other examples throughout the Bible of men and women whose faith were, was tested and they proved themselves faithful no matter what. And uh, today I want to look at one example that always uh, just is a powerful reminder of the kind of faith that we are to have in God. And that the example I want to look at today is one time in the life of Abraham. There are actually several places um throughout the life of Abraham that we could go to see his faith tested. But for today, I want to look at one, if you will, major time in the life of Abraham, at least that we have recorded, in which his faith was tested by God and to see how Abraham did with that test. So if you want to turn with me to Genesis we're going to go all the way back to the book of Genesis in chapter 22. Um, chapter 22 of Genesis. You can listen along now, you know, kind of quickly leading up to this chapter. You know, of all again, of all the things, you know, God, you know, called Abraham to do and to trust in God and many different ways Abraham's faith was tested. But we know that God had promised Abraham and Sarah a, a, a child, promised Abraham an heir, Although Abraham and Sarah could not have children, God was going to miraculously, um, one day in God's time, bring them or you know provide them one, give them the ability to have a child. And so God had promised this child to Abraham, and God didn't give uh, Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. Uh, did not allow them to have or to give birth to Isaac for. Quite a while uh, after the promises were made. And then finally Isaac was born and Isaac was growing up. Uh, and a wonderful, joyous time for Abraham and Sarah. And, you know, in enjoying Isaac and him growing up and the promised child of God and, and whom they loved. And But then we come to Genesis 22. Uh, Genesis 22. I want to go ahead and read it. Um and then we'll talk a little bit more about it after we read through it, just to remember what happened, um, and it's in case we, we haven't read it before. So Genesis 22, beginning in verse 1, that it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then God said, take now your son your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Can't imagine Abraham's reaction to that. You know, God coming to Abraham, calling him, and then saying, I want you to go sacrifice your only son whom you love. But Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go over yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. 
And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then Isaac said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. That Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide as it is said to this day. In the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies and your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men and they rose and went together to Beersheba and Abraham dwelt there at Beersheba. Now, after reading that, it only takes a couple minutes to read that. But I really think about what just happened. Again, God told Abraham to take his son, his only son, son whom he loved, he cherished. I mean, he was the promised child, a uh, uh, um, miracle birth by the power of God can't imagine what was going through Abraham's mind when, you know, after God had provided this promised child and he's been enjoying watching this child grow up. And now God comes and says, Abraham, I want you to kill your only son. I want you to offer him up as a burnt offering. That would be hard. But again, this was a test from God for Abraham. To really see, if you will, how much Abraham truly feared God and had faith in God and would obey God. How far would Abraham be willing to go? I mean, would there be a point to where Abraham would say, well, well no, Lord, I'm not going to do that. Or no, I can't do that. Or, you know, whatever the case may be. What's amazing in the heart and faith of Abraham is... At least as the account goes in scripture, Abraham didn't hesitate. Now, I'm sure, it, you know, there were a lot of mo emotions going through Abraham's heart and mind. I'm sure it was very hard. I'm sure he didn't want to do it. But when it came to his faith and his trust and hope in God, and whatever God asked him to do, Abraham was not going to Abraham was not going to, to turn away. And so Abraham, without hesitating, goes and he takes his son and he goes through everything. He's, he, he makes the, the, the altar, he lines everything up, he ties Isaac up, he gets the knife, he's about to kill Isaac. And God, the angel of the Lord, calls out and stops Abraham says, Abraham, don't do it. Now I know 
Now I know that you fear God, for you would not withhold your son, your only son, whom you love from me. I'm always reminded by this example of Abraham and for myself and for all of us. You know, today our faith is going to be tested and challenged in many ways. Um, just like for Abraham. And maybe we're not going to face, obviously, situations like this necessarily. But when it comes to the will of God in our life, when it comes to what God has called us to do, how God has called us to live, the sins that God has called us to, to give up, the, uh, the, the life that God has called us to, the sinful life God has called us to turn away from, to put our faith and our hope and our trust in God. And I think of this in Abraham's example, and I ask, is there anything I would be unwilling to do for the Lord, that the Lord is asking me. And we all need to ask ourselves this and be reminded and say, is there anything the Lord is asking of me that I am unwilling to do? Is there some sin in my life that I'm unwilling to give up? Is there something God asks me to do in my life that I'm unwilling to do? I mean, our faith is going to be tested like Abraham. The question is, how are we going to respond? I think if we're not careful, there may come something down the road where maybe we're not willing to do it. And we got to make sure that our faith and our trust and our love for God, our fear for God is true, is complete. So that when those tests come, we're, we're not going to back down. So that instead, when, we're, when our faith is tested, we will be proven true. So that like the Lord said of Abraham, I now I know that you fear God. Because you would not, or because you were willing to do what God said. And there are too many people in this world, and even those who claim to be Christians, or those who claim to love God, believe in God, have faith in God, but then when it comes to doing what God commands them to do or asks of them, they, they're not doing it. And that's just not going to work with God. God is looking for us, for all of us who claim faith in him to, to live it, to prove it, um, to truly follow him in all that he asks us to do. And let's make sure we have that unconditional faith. Let's make sure we have that faith that is going to do whatever God calls us to do, whatever he commands us to do in his word that we're ready. We're ready to, to, to obey. We're ready to, to serve God, to love him, faithful to the end. And one more thing. I don't think we can really go from this example and not think of Jesus and not think of what God did. You know, yes, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son, whom he loved. But God didn't make him actually do it. God ended up allowing Isaac to be spared. But let's remember that it is God who was willing to send his own son, whom he loved, to be sacrificed for our sins. And God did not spare Jesus from that. And he did that, God did that for our sins, to save us from our sins. When I read this, I'm just, I'm reminded of what, what God has done for us in Jesus. That God has shown his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. God sacrificed his own son. So really, 
God did not ask anything of Abraham that he was not willing to do himself. But God actually did. So that we could be saved. And thanks be to God for that. So when our faith is being tested and challenged and when we're, when we're being asked of God to do things, to repent of sins, to stop sinning, to give up things in our lives, to, to, do, to live the life he has called us to live, let's remember what God was willing to do for us. Let's remember that God was willing to sacrifice his own son so that we could be saved. And is there really anything that God asks us to do that is any greater than what he has done for us? Let's make sure to have that faith. Let's make sure to prove prove out our faith to God like Abraham did. That no matter what God asks, asks us, commands us, calls us to do, in our life, we will stay faithful and true and obedient in our love to God. God bless.